and welcome to Servings Kitchen with a Cause. On with me today is... Melody Pratt. <laughs> the one and only. Absolutely. We, we go way back. Yes, way. Way back. Way back. Yes. Dinosaurs and things like that. So what are you here representing today? The Exodus Ranch in Douglasville, Georgia mm -hmm. is a nonprofit and our goal and our mission is to help children and basically the most vulnerable in our community. Okay. We work with foster children. Mm -hmm. uh, we do equine mentoring. We do foster fun days at the ranch. We also work with special needs. We mm -hmm. are the proud home of the uh, Douglas County Special Olympics team. Yes. And uh, those kids are getting ready for their big meet in Gainesville this coming weekend. We're excited about that. And we also have a rodeo team. So we've got a lot going on over there. And we have been out there to film a few times. Uh, we have covered just the ranch in general. We've covered the rodeo team, Special Olympics. We've had a great time out there. And today we're focusing on that nonprofit aspect because if you've watched this show, you know this show is all about helping out our local oh. community. And that's what you are doing with Exodus Ranch. And we thank you for that. Oh, it's my pleasure. I mean, it's all about helping your community in any way that you can. We encourage anyone out there to get involved with any any nonprofit, anybody that's trying to help out, whether right. it's the homeless or fosters or special needs, just get out there and do something to make it better instead of complaining. Right, exactly. Don't just complain, get out there and make it better. What have you done to make it better? Yeah, you. So we're gonna talk more about that in just a little bit, but first we're gonna reveal the ingredients to Melody and see if she can guess what we're cooking today. It's right. not Komodo Dragon, right? It is not. It is not. Are you sure? Have you had it's that really before? really bitter. Okay. Well, I hear. No. I hear. That's yeah. why I haven't tried it. We're not doing that today. Okay, good. I couldn't find that at Publix anyway, I'm pretty sure. I'm really glad. Yeah, the meat guy said they didn't have it. Oh, the All right, excitement. here we go. Try not to knock too much down. It's a lot of ingredients, and I will let you know that there are three recipes. Hmm. Okay. So I'm supposed to guess what we're doing? Yes. Um, blackberry cobbler? Boom, <gasps> nailed the first so one. Yeah, yes. baby. So you got the dessert. Okay, and... Um, so we've got a main and a side. Chuck short ribs with... Okay, I'm guessing thyme. Yes. <laughs> So we're making some kind of a rib dish. Yes. Got that. We're yeah. doing braised short ribs. Okay. And then we got a side dish. Yes. And here's the, the big clue. I can't see what it says. Well, turn it, pick it up, turn it uh, around. We're going to do grits with um, cheese yes. as our side dish. Cheese grits. All right. So this is kind of culinary, the way we're going to do it. You know, they lay down the bed of grits and then the braised beef short rib on top. You know, we're getting fancy We're getting today. fancy? Yeah. Okay. And the reason why I chose this, we always try to have a theme. You're on a ranch, mm -hmm. and I started thinking about ranch-type foods, and I was like, pioneer woman. That That's lady right. cooks for ranchers every single day. That's right. So I pulled some recipes off of her website, and everything I've seen her cook looks amazing. So we got the braised beef short ribs on top of cheese grits and blackberry cobbler. Sounds good to me, I'm ready. All right, we're gonna get cooking here in just a second. You hear some sound in the background there. We're starting with a cobbler and we're doing our own whipped cream. Homemade whipped cream, it's yes. best kind. Yes, so we got the stand mixer going over here, trying to thicken up the heavy whipping cream. As Soon as it gets a little bit thicker, we're gonna put in uh, a little bit of vanilla extract and about three tablespoons of confectioner sugar. So let me check it and see how we're doing. Can't turn it up too high or else it'll get us all uh, nasty. <laughs> well, whipped cream all over the place. Yeah. And just a little mama hint, if you yes. want your whipped cream to be curry, you can add a little bit of berry juice to it and it'll color it. Ooh, nice. Yeah. Good idea. We could probably throw some of this blackberry juice in there. Or you can just go with old fashioned white, whichever. Yeah, there you go. Now we're starting to get a good beat going. Yep. It's gonna take my horse to the old town road and gonna ride till I can't no more. <laughs> All right, so we don't want it to be completely thick when we put in uh, everything. You can tell it is a little bit thick because it's sticking to the beaters there. 
So I'm gonna add just a little bit of vanilla extract and our sugar. And we're gonna let that dog out here in just a second. He's not a fan of the blueberry cobbler. Mm -mm. He prefers the short ribs. Our oven is ready for um, the blackberry cobbler. And we will be ready as well in just a moment. All right. So we've got about three tablespoons of confectioner's sugar. We're gonna get this going again. Get that incorporated and get this nice and whipped. All right, so let's check and see what we got here. Oh yeah, it's giving us those peaks that we want. And it is just about perfect. So I'm gonna put this back in the refrigerator. Keep it cold. And we got plenty of whipped cream now. All right, so for our dough, we wanna do uh, a cup of self-rising flour and uh, let's see, I think a cup of sugar, yes. And we're gonna whisk that together. And then we're gonna add some milk. That'll be our wet ingredient. You do a lot of cooking? Uh, I used to, not as much now since it's just two of us. Everything, yeah. you know, it's so hard to cook for two it people, is. it really it is. is. Here, you want it? Yes. Okay. You'll wind up with so much, so many what? leftovers. I know, I'm used to cooking for a big old family and teenagers and now they're all gone, yeah. so it's hard. How many kids you got? We have four, three girls and a boy. And bunches of grandkids now. Awesome. All right, so we can whisk that up a little bit and I'm gonna get a cup of milk ready. All right, we're whisk whisked. Make sure we're a cup. All right, and to that we're adding a half of a stick of butter that's already melted. All right. And then what I'm gonna do is I am going to grease a pan, this, uh, or this casserole dish, with the other half of this butter. Of course, it won't take the whole thing. If you're doing farm cooking, you have to use butter and everything. You have to. Butter or lard. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> the good stuff. Yeah. We don't do calories. We do comfort. <laughs> All right, so we can pour that batter into here. And to that, we're going to add about two cups of the Oops. blackberries. Teeth on the farm too. <laughs> this is tricky. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> Good work. All right, no waste. Do I get to lick the bowl or absolutely? Do you do that? <laughs> Might not be as good until it's uh, actually cooked. It's got sugar in it and flour. What's not good about that? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> now that that's probably about two cups, but I'm gonna add just a little bit more since we got it. And while I'm doing this, won't you tell the people a little bit about yourself and how you got here to Douglas County? Well, that's a long that's story, a, yeah, right? It's a really long story. We'll do it in a nutshell. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, my husband is a horse trainer. He trained horses and I flew, also did freelance reporting. And um, we were all over, New York State, Kentucky, South Dakota, Wyoming, North Dakota, um, just everywhere, Utah. We actually came back to Georgia from Utah. And um, I have no clue actually why we ended up <laughs> No, no, seriously. It's, it's a mystery. We, we had property in, in uh, up in Somerville, 
uh -huh. by the mm -hmm. you know Alabama Tennessee yep. border above our, Rome. Yep, and our oldest daughter. We were going to build a house there, and our oldest daughter said, "Mom, we're expecting our first child." They lived in Buckhead at the time, so we thought, "Well, we've got to be closer." So we came to Douglasville, found the place, the ranch that we're on, and I'm not even quite sure how we found it. It was just kind of a quirk. And um, moved there, and then six months later, they moved to L.A. Oh. <laughs> so, but we ended up, it's where we were supposed to be. Yeah. And we ended up there. My husband had a trucking company in uh, North Dakota. He ended up uh, coming back here full time, mm -hmm. and we decided that we just wanted to work with kids. We wanted to basically do what scripture tells us to help the widows and orphans and just mm -hmm. love on people. So um, we kind of prayed through it and decided that foster kids, there's such a need for foster children. And yeah. I mean, Douglas County, Atlanta just has so, so many of them. Yeah. And um, you know, these are, these are kids that just want somebody to love them. Right. So we decided to start working with them. Mm -hmm. And a lot of these kids have issues, PTSD and abuse issues, mm -hmm. emotional issues. Um, equine therapy is really good for that. Right. So we started doing some assisted therapy, but more than that, we would have foster fun days at the ranch. We do about four a year for all ages, kids that are in group homes, kids that are just with their families. Mm -hmm. And I mean, with foster families, and we do horse rides, pony rides, games, mechanical bull, bouncy houses, we have entertainment. Um, lunch is provided by some great uh, restaurants in the area, mm -hmm. and the community pitches in, and we just put on some really fun days for these kids. Um, and then the Special Olympics, they came to us and asked if we would be interested in helping. I'm like, mm -hmm. oh, heck yeah, we'll just add that right in there. Yeah. And then we added to that the, um, the special days at the ranch, we call them. We have group homes of, of uh, special needs people that come out, both mm -hmm. children and adults, and they mm -hmm. just interact with the horses. Um, we've had the opportunity to work with wounded warriors. That's been a lot of fun too, mm -hmm. interacting with the horses. Right. And we do a program now called Pups and Ponies that mm -hmm. is free. And it's for the senior citizens in the community and senior homes. We take the oh, pups great. and we have little tiny miniature horses and a miniature donkey. Uh -huh. And they go to the senior homes and interact with the senior citizens. So there's a lot to it. Um, we basically, and I will just say this, we got to Douglas County because evidently it's where we were supposed right, to be. It right. wasn't a plan, right. honestly. Georgia, this part of Georgia was not a plan at all. Right. But sometimes God's plans are bigger than ours and we just kind of go with it. And we've loved it. We've had a great time. I've met some great people. Mm -hmm. um, and just want to see this community be the best that it can be. Mm -hmm. uh, so that's our goal. Well, you guys got plugged in really quickly. Uh, you haven't been there that long. I mean, I remember when we first heard about you guys, and, and this goes back to the ranch itself. Someone told me where it was, and I was like, there's no way. There's no way that ranch is there, because it's not far from Douglasville, like the city of Douglasville. You go south of I-20 on Fairburn Road, take your right, and you would think, okay, well, that's still like city land, right? Mm -hmm. No. You when, Once you get back there, you have no idea you are... Yeah, we're exact. I mean, we're less than a mile from I-20. Yeah. It's really, it's honestly, you're coming off all of that interstate and everything, and then you turn down and go back there. It's like being in a whole different world. Yeah, it is. But you're right in the middle of the city yeah. with the ranch. And it's it's just a really cool place because it has, you know, woods and creeks and mm -hmm. pastures and all this great place for kids to just, mm -hmm. you know, run around and make noise and, and be crazy. And, right. Um, so it is. It is. It's kind of like an oasis. It is. Right in it the middle is. of the city. It's convenient but you feel like you're out in the middle of nowhere yeah. at the same time. It's awesome. It's a great location. Yeah. Really good. Couldn't ask for a better location. Yeah. We're going to get this in the oven a little bit later. We're going to talk about how you can help. Uh, this is going to cook uh, at 350 for about an hour. It's going to get nice and bubbly, and then we're going to add a little bit of more sugar on top to get that caramelized mm -hmm. and let it cook for a little bit longer. Coming up next, we're going to start our braised short ribs and cheese grits, so stick around. We're using every square inch of this island. We've got food and stuff everywhere. So we're gonna make this work though. First thing I have to do is take some chopped up bacon and put it into the pot over here. We're gonna saute it, render out the fat, take the bacon out of there, and we're going to brown our short ribs in here. But before we brown them, we need to dredge them in the flour that you have prepared, and I'll do that so I, I'll be the one getting my hands dirty right now. Uh, and while I do that, 
you'll need to take your three carrots, peel them, and then we're gonna chop them into diced pieces. Okay. To that I'm gonna add, there's not an, enough fat, so they say add, you know, a little bit of olive oil to that. And we're gonna start browning the sides of these. Do probably four at a time. Looking good. Yep, it smells good too already. Yes. Still working on my shallots and my onion over here. Okay, so here's a professional question. What's the difference between a shallot and an onion? I was afraid you would ask that. From what I understand, one is a little stronger. The shallot is a little stronger, uh, so you don't need to use as much. And that is another reason why typically when you use shallots, you mince them. You don't just chop them. You want them pretty small, small pieces. But, you know. Look at you with all that professional information. <laughs> That's just what I heard. <laughs> I thought you'd say, I don't know, can you tell me? I don't know. And I couldn't have told you. I mean, I can so. make up whatever. <laughs> but if that's not true, it should be. I think so, I thought it was a pretty good explanation. We'll go with it. Yep. And with that in mind, it says to do two shallots. However, these shallots are pretty large, so I'm just gonna do one. Plus, I'm tired of cutting, so that's... You're doing a bang-up job on it, though. Thanks. I'd say those are definitely minced. Yes. I'll never make it on Iron Chef, but, <laughs> you know. My never wife doesn't know the difference, and that's all that matters. Yep, that's all that counts. Okay, I'm gonna check my grits back here. We've got two cups of water boiling, or actually, we have eight cups of water, and we're gonna do two cups of the grits. So, let's see how this water's doing. We're right there. I'm gonna add my grits. Two cups. Thank you, ma'am. You're welcome. Look at that pour. And I'm gonna drop this down to just a simmer. You wanna turn those? Boom. Thank you, sir. All right, I'm gonna stir these a little bit. Add just a little bit of salt. Cover. And they'll go about 20 to 25 minutes. When they come off, they'll get all the goodness. The cheese, some eggs, all the some good seasoning. Stuff. And then we're gonna actually put them in a casserole and bake them. So they're gonna be amazing. Those look amazing too. Yes, I am a red meat fan, yes. I will admit. All right, so we got the beef done. It is browned and ready to cook fully in just a little bit. It's looking good. But first what we gotta do is, is add our hard work to the pan here, the Dutch oven. Thank you. Mm -hmm. And the carrots. Nice. And we'll move that around. This is gonna go for about two minutes or so. Now You're an expert stir, look at yeah, you. Yeah, I mean tell you what. Ooh. This is just I'll be amazing. very stir quite like that. <laughs> now there's a lot of goodness that is trapped on the bottom of it of this pan. But what we're gonna do is deglaze it with a little bit of red wine once we're done cooking the onion and the, uh, the carrots. Uh, we're gonna wind up adding our bacon back 
to it. We're gonna add four cups of beef broth, a little bit of cayenne. We've got some thyme that we're gonna add to it. And we've got some fresh rosemary that we're gonna add. We're gonna get this going Sounds for good. about another minute and a half or so. All right, that's looking good. I'm gonna add just a little bit of this red wine. Try to deglaze the pan. Oh yeah, scrape those good bits off the bottom. That's called flavor right there. Can you smell that? The good stuff, I can. Ooh. I can, I can. Man, that smells good. There's nothing better than the smell of cooking onions, I will say that. Yeah. In my opinion. Yep. Onions, garlic. Mm-mm. All right, now, if you will, take that and pour that in here. This yes, is sir. the beef broth. Four Are cups. Ready? Yep. Can we get all of it? Yep. Four cups right there. Every bit. Voila. Perfect. Looks a little bit like vegetable stew right now. Yeah, it does. Let's do some pepper. Liberal. Or just salt. The salt is in oh, there. There we go, okay. Yes. Decent amount of salt. And here we go. Cayenne pepper. Yeah. Oh wait, it has a flip top. Yeah, <laughs> a there. safety. Yeah, we a don't want to. We don't want to put that much in there. It's about a half, quarter to a half teaspoon. Make sure you Just don't rub your eyes bit. now. Yeah, exactly. I'm gonna go ahead and add back our bacon. Looking good. Please. And some garlic. Four cloves. If you've watched this show, you know I use my daughter's baby fork because it strains out the liquid and a scoop is about a clove. Awesome. So we'll do four of those. You need to use lots of that just in case there are yeah. any vampires in Douglasville. You never know. There was a, a uh, Sasquatch sighting, so. Oh, we definitely have a Sasquatch at the ranch, I'm positive. Well, yeah. then you We've should caught go out him and find on, it. We've caught him on the hunt cam. <laughs> Shrek's donkey is there as well. All right. Yeah. <laughs> a donkey. <laughs> it's Sasquatch's pet, I think. Get this turned up a little bit so we can get it to a boil. All right, I'm going to go ahead and add these short ribs back. And while I'm doing this, I will say that the recipe called for uh, finishing this in the Dutch oven here. And it was gonna be like two hours. So, I have a better way. I have an Instant Pot, and we're gonna take all of this, pour it into the Instant Pot, and pressure cook it. All right. It'll only take about 45 minutes. The last two things we need are rosemary, just the whole thing, and then a sprig of the thyme. One time sprig. Perfect. You gotta smell it mm. before it goes in it or, awesome. or it doesn't work as well. Yeah. All right, that looks pretty. Yes, it does. Looks edible for sure. Yes. That is some uh, good ranch food. That'll, that'll put some meat on your bones. All right, so we're gonna get this put into the Instant Pot, get it started on pressure cook. We got our grits almost ready to add the other stuff to it. So when we come back, we'll doctor up our grits and get those in the oven as well. You ready for that? I am ready, it sounds good, I can't and, wait. And that's the last step. We'll be ready to eat after that. Kept the wine out for you. <laughs> Good man. We don't Good need man. it for any of the other recipes. Right. Well, but, it's know, red meat, you know. You never, yeah, it goes great with red that's meat. That's right, that's right. Our grits are coming off of the stove right now. I'm gonna put them right over here. And what we need to do is add some eggs to it. However, you don't wanna add eggs to really hot liquids like this because it'll scramble them. So we have to temper them. So what we're gonna do is add a couple spoonfuls 
of the grits to the eggs first. Stir that around just a little bit. That brings them up to heat without scrambling them. Maybe one more just to make sure. This is four eggs. And we've got a lot of grits, so this is gonna make a big, a big dish of grits. All right, so while I'm stirring this, if you want to add the butter first. Okay. How much butter? Everything. Every bit it's of a it? Stick and a half. Yeah, baby. Stick and a half. Yes. This is another food group in the South. Yes. Butter. Butter, sugar. Butter, sugar. Look at that. Yes. And then we need some of our sharp cheddar. Sharp cheddar? Sharp, sharp cheddar. cheddar. And what I want you to do is put three big handfuls in here, which I did, is. I did wash these. Yes, just so y'all yes, know, yes. they're clean. That, that will be about three cups. One. Yes. The, rest, the recipe did say if you want to do more, you can do more. So I think this is actually going to be a little more than three cups, but I don't have a problem with that. We can do it like the count. Yes, two. two. Ah, ah, ah. Ha, ha, ha. Three. What? Do you want more? Should we go more? Let's one go more, back. one more. Let's do it. Yes. Get it in there. Perfect. All right, I'm gonna stir this up, get this incorporated. Now, we talked about what you guys do at the ranch. Mm -hmm. Is there an opportunity for people to either volunteer, help out, donate, uh, money, anything? What, what, what do you guys need? All of the above, okay. all of the above. Um, because everything that we do for the community is free, um, for, our, for our, our special needs and our foster children and our pups and pony program for seniors, those are all at no cost. Uh -huh. um, but it doesn't mean that they don't cost anything right. to run. It's actually quite expensive to take care of everything and to keep things uh, you know, kept up properly. Mm -hmm. So yes, we need volunteers. We need volunteers to help out at the ranch if anybody would like to come paint, weed eat, help repair fence. Just do general maintenance. Mm -hmm. We always need those kind of volunteers. Um, we need horse people, if anybody's a horse person, to help volunteer with our foster fun days and our pups and ponies. But you do have to be able to handle horses for that. Yeah. Um, monetarily, when we do our foster days especially, we provide a lot of things for, a lot of activities for them. Mm -hmm. Although the, you know, the ponies and the horses are already there, the other things are not. Right. So we have to hire, you know, because although we are a nonprofit, those organizations that, that you know, run out things are not nonprofits, mm -hmm. so they do have to be paid. Right. Um, restaurants in the community are welcome to get involved by donating food because we do provide a full big lunch for mm -hmm. them at our foster fund days. Um, so there's lots and lots of ways to get involved. Mm -hmm. And if anybody wants to check us out, you're more than welcome to either give us a call or you can send us an email and come by the ranch. We don't, it's not just open time at the ranch because we do have horses right. and livestock, so the gate is always shut. So and it you does live have to there. be by appointment. Yes, we do live there. So Absolutely. it's a private residence, yes. you know. We are on property. Somebody's usually there 24 seven, mm -hmm. um, but you do need to call ahead of time. Otherwise we won't know you're there. Right, so. right. And how, how would they get all this contact information? Maybe the website? Website, um, exodusranch.com. Very easy, exodusranch.com. Our email address is also very easy, exodusranch at hotmail.com. Let me say that again, exodusranch at hotmail.com. You can contact us anyway. Um, we also do field trips for schools. Mm -hmm. That The field trips for schools basically help fund some of the things we do. Mm -hmm. um, so if you want to bring a preschool group or a young group out, elementary, bring them on out. We do pony rides, paint a pony, all that kind of stuff. Mm -hmm. uh, and that, that's one of the things that we do to fund the ranch. Great. So you know what to do, how to get in touch, uh, yes. what they have, what their needs are. So make sure you get uh, involved, if not with them, with somebody. Absolutely. Now we're gonna finish up this recipe. All we have to do is put these grits in a greased casserole. Greased? Yes. Here, you need some scraping? Yes, perfect. I'm a good scraper. See, this is why teamwork yeah. works best in the kitchen. Look at that. Scrape, 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 and scrape. Perfect. Good deal. Yes. Oh. <laughs> All right, now, this would normally go into 
oven that was 325, but our uh, dessert, our cobbler is still cooking. It has about, uh, about seven minutes or so. So we're gonna go ahead and put this in there and then we can drop the temperature down when the cobbler is done. So if you would help open the Absolutely. door. Thank you so much. Oh man, look at that cobbler. Yes, cooking. the cobbler's looking good. The recipe said it would be bubbly and it's starting to bubble. So once uh, the timer goes off, we're gonna add just a little more sugar on top so that we can get it real brown and crispy. And uh, in about 30, 45 minutes, we'll be ready to eat. Are we eating dessert first? We'll eat whatever you want first. I'm always dessert first. <laughs> well then that's what we'll do. We'll be eating cobbler here in just a little <laughs> bit. Stick around. This looks pretty good. I'm sorry, you're talking to me. I'm busy concentrating on this. <laughs> Take it all in. Take it all in. It does. It looks amazing. It smells really good, too. Yes. You need to put a smell thing on the camera so they I can know. smell it. We've been trying to figure that out for years. It just hasn't worked. Oof. Now, I know you said you wanted to try dessert first. I remembered. Absolutely. So let's do it. I'm a dessert it. kind of person. Let's do it. Are we ready? Yes. Get a little whipped cream on there. Mm-hmm. Mm. That's really good. Yes, it is. And really easy. God, that was so easy Ooh. to make. Even the whipped cream. Mmm. Mm -mm -mm. I can already tell I'm going to have to go in for seconds. That's not a very big container. You take that yeah. half of it, I'll take this. Perfect. Just don't mention to my kids that we made it. <laughs> my lips are sealed. <laughs> All right, going in for this short rib with the cheese grits. Get a little carrot on there. It's nice and tender. Yep, it is. It's falling off the bone. Mmm. That's hot. That tastes like pot roast right there. Mm -mm. That is good. Woo! Yes, sir. That's going on the recipe list for sure. Mine broke my my. Your, my bone. Your bone came right, right out. Off, I don't think I have a, so, no, I do have one on mine. Yeah, you got one, but I got it's, one. it's not going to pose a threat. I don't think. I'm gonna have some of those grits just by themselves. Mm. So good. Really oh, good. This turned out well, really well. It did. Good ranch food. Yes, sir. Fill you up, get you ready to get out there and herd some cattle or something. Exactly. Herd some cattle, some sheep, feed some yeah. donkeys, some horses. There you go. Whip some kids into shape while yeah, you're out there, make exactly. them do some stuff. Absolutely, I'm ready now. And speaking yeah. of the kids, you got, you got them running all over the place over there, the foster kids and and uh, special special Olympics and the whole deal. So run through run through what you guys do real quick again, and then tell us how we can get involved. All right. <clears throat> In a nutshell, we work with foster children. We have them come out to the ranch for foster fun days. If you are a foster parent or part of the you know any any type of work that you do, cast anything with foster children, watch our Facebook page, Exodus Ranch Facebook page, because we put out there when we're doing our foster fun days. The kids come out, it's a free day at the ranch for all ages. We have all kinds of entertainment, fun things for them to do, horse pony rides, paint a pony. And secondly, uh, Special Olympics. If you have a special needs child, make sure you contact the Douglas County Special Olympics if you're interested in, in having them be a part of that team. They practice at the ranch, they use our horses, and we take them to the big meet in Gainesville, which is coming up here shortly. Very excited about that. We have 13 team members this year, so it's gonna nice. be a pretty big deal. Uh, we also do Pups and Ponies. Again, free program for the community. If you are in a senior, have a senior home, or are in contact with a senior home, you'd like us to bring the Pups and Ponies out, please contact us, we would love to do that as well. And we have availability if you want to bring in wounded warriors. We've worked with women in crisis, basically the most vulnerable in our community. We open up the ranch, want them to come in. We do not charge for those programs. Mm -hmm. We do have programs on the ranch that do charge to help fund these programs. But right. anything that's for the vulnerable in our community is, is a no fee. If you want to get involved, you can do so by volunteering to do numerous things around the ranch. We need some handymen out there to build some things and, 
and help with fence and things like that. We need horse people. Monetarily, if you want to donate, you can actually adopt a horse and help take care of one of the horses, their vet bills, their feed. There are 30 of them on the property. Wow. And all of them are being used, except our very young ones and our very old ones. So we need basically all the help that we can get to help the community. And if not us, please find some way to volunteer. Make your community better by getting involved. And that's usually what I say, so I don't even have to say that. <laughs> so that's exactly what, what we try to do with this program is get you guys involved, show you some of the ways that you can get involved. Uh, and if you choose to be with Exodus Ranch, fantastic. If not, do something. Get involved with your local community and make it better. And now we're going to finish this food. Yes, we are. I'm ready. All right. We'll, enough, we'll enough see, John. Yes, we'll see enough you next John. month.